It's Bam Bam Bigelow versus Bret Hart in a rematch of the King of the Ring finals. Stu and Helen Hart are in the uh, balcony, actually. So they're having this match, and Bret's awesome, and Bam Bam is awesome, and it's a very good match. And last week, they had that awesome Sean Marty match, and... uh, uh, all I could think was that match must have done very, very well. And so now they're giving high-profile stars plenty of time to have a good match. What a novel and innovative concept. So this goes through two commercial breaks. And it's finally picking up at the end. And Brett's making this comeback. And Vincent Mann gets to say, back, buddy drop. And it sees saw matchup back and forth. So all of his favorites in here. And then finally, Brett goes to the sharpshooter. But then Jerry Lawler, that evil bastard Jerry Lawler, goes to interview Stu and Helen and make fun of them and they're trying to go line for line barb for barb with Jerry Lawler may I may I jump in for a moment Vinny? this is a 10-3 round okay so everything Vinny said is absolutely correct Brett's going for the sharpshooter and Jerry Lawler comes out to yell at his parents okay so if you didn't watch this show, I know what you're thinking right now. You're thinking, as soon as Jerry Lawler comes out, Bret Hart is distracted, and he leaps from the ring, and he goes to uh, to beat up Jerry Lawler and, uh, and save his parents or whatever. That's what you're thinking, right? Because that's everything you've ever seen on Raw. That doesn't happen. Jerry Lawler begins to go back and forth with Stu and Helen Hart for like five minutes he's just going on and on and on and the ironic thing is Stu and helen had comebacks and amazingly you could actually hear what they were saying like usually everyone makes fun of Stu because they're like ah like you can't understand what he's saying but Stu actually had lines that you could hear what he was saying but for some reason lawler was acting like he couldn't hear him and he was just like moving on past whatever come like if you're going to do a back and forth, like, listen to what the guy says, and then, you know, you have a comeback. Lawler would just move on to the next joke, even though Stu had had some sort of comeback to what he said. So this is going on and on. So in the ring, like, Brett looks up and he sees Lawler up there, but he keeps wrestling. And he's they're going back and forth, and they're, they're, they're doing a match in the ring. And there's another match going on in the balcony, a verbal debate. But I'm watching this thinking, this is good because Brett is not an idiot babyface who, as soon as something happens, he's distracted, and then, you know, he immediately runs off or whatever. That's what I thought, foolishly. So it's like five minutes. They're, they continue wrestling. Lawler and Stu and Helen are going back and forth, and I'm waiting for a finish or something like that. And instead, after five minutes of still wrestling... Then it was like, now Brett decides to leave. Right? Uh, yeah. What the fuck were you waiting for, dude? I I, I don't know. He tried to leave once, and Bam Bam started fighting him and dragged him back. So he went back to fighting Bam Bam. But he had many, many other opportunities to go break up this interview and opted not to until it was far too until late. Until he finally did. Until he just did. <laughs> God. If you're going to go, like, and the funny thing was, it took so long for him to decide to go up there that Lawler had given up on the verbal debate and voluntarily left. It wasn't even like Brett ran up there and chased him away. Lawler went back and forth. He buried the parents, and finally he had enough. He was escorted out by a security guy who almost beat up a little kid that was trying to hug Lawler or something like that. And uh, finally, when Lawler is long gone, yeah. then Brett decides, now I'm going to run up there. Well, and he no, goes no, no, up no, there and he not, hugs his mother. That's not quite true. Brett left the ring and got counted out. And Lawler saw this and left. Now, it took Brett like three minutes to get up <laughs> in there. In this tiny building? <laughs> yes. What Bye. the fuck took him so long to get upstairs? I don't have an answer for that one. John Moxley can be at the top of a, of a building with 16,000 people in it, and he can get from there to the ring in about 22 seconds. Bret Hart leaves the ring in the Manhattan Center, and it's three minutes before he can get to the upper balcony. Well, they may only, may only have one stairwell and maybe the other side of the building. I don't know. So that's happened. There was a very, very good match with a lot of silliness at the end, and uh, there you go. Finally, Bret arrives to say hi to, to, say hi to Stu and Ellen, Helen. So I don't know if you were timing this, how long we've actually 
were talking about this match when we started, but uh, no joke, this episode is half over. Yeah, this was 30 <laughs> minutes of the show. Yeah. This was the best thing on the show, and uh, the show was all downhill from there, so uh, I guess I can continue on. To uh, Dana Brooke beat Becky Lynch. For <laughs> And that, my friends, is Monday Night Raw. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.